Hi everyone, my name is Mandy Rosen and today I'm going to show you a before and after of this picture and I'm going to go by step by step and show you how to seamlessly create a flowy fabric dress picture. So these are, this is a before picture. This is what it originally looked like. I kind of like the people in the background. I didn't even notice that until now. That's kind of a cute little moment. Anyways, so I have that picture. That's the before picture. That's the main image we're going to create off of. And I started at the top with the loose piece of fabric. First I had it wrapped around the model's body and then I kind of worked my way down the mountain with the fabric, just taking a lot of pictures. And I usually take a lot more pictures than I actually need, um, just so I have a lot of options for the Photoshop process. But you can kind of see how I'm working my way down the hill and how I'm just taking a lot of pictures. And these are the best ones that made the cut. So I I'm not going to show you a hundred pictures, but these are just the best fabric ones. All right, so let's get started. Let's go back to our main image. So this is the main image we want to build off of. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That's my mom to the left. Just to make it a little easier, I'm going to delete her from the picture. Sorry, mommy, I love you. There we go. Let's start with this picture. So I just selected this piece of fabric right here. You can see the marching ants. I selected it with the quick selection tool. And that's a really great tool because it kind of just snaps to the edges of what you're trying to select. And since it's red, it stands out from the background, so it's a really easy selection to do. So I'm going to copy and paste that and bring that back to the main image. And usually when I'm working with these types of pictures, I'll take the layer and I'll transform it hitting Command T, the letter T on your keyboard, and then I'll stretch it out. Really, it's pretty simple. All you do is you have your layer here. You create a layer mask, and then you go to your paint tool and make sure black is on top, white is on bottom, because black means that you're erasing away. And you want to overlap the layer. So now that I have this layer, I'm going to overlap it with the original main fabric, and I'm going to erase away at the edges so that they blend together. And You can kind of see how that comes together a little bit. And since this is a little bit darker than I want the layer to be, I'm going to use curves and I'm going to brighten it up just so it matches with the original a bit more. See, look at that. That's beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> also, sometimes if I find a really good piece of fabric like this one, but I want to reverse it so that it's flipped the other way, I'll hit Command T. And then I'll go to transform, flip it horizontally so that I can use it on this side. I'll hit the backspace so you can kind of see the difference. And now we're going to make it bigger. See, and you can see how all the layers are starting to blend together, which is really exciting. Another technique I'd like to show you when editing these types of pictures is just to make it a little bit easier, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle piece. So just like a puzzle piece, you'll have all of your pieces kind of laid out in front of you and you'll kind of pick and choose which one you want to put down. So I'm going to do that with this picture. So I'm going to copy and paste this here, this little piece of fabric, and I'm going to take all the other pieces of fabric and do the same thing. Just to make it easier, I'll just include the shadow here. Okay, now it looks a little silly, but this is the easiest way, in my opinion, to create these fabric pictures. So now you got all your layers laid out like a puzzle piece in front of you, and you can just pick and choose which one you want to lay down, which ones you want to reverse, horizontally, flip, you know, you, you do it the way that's easiest for you. So everyone does it differently. So now, I'm looking at the screen and I'm wondering which is the first fabric I want to lay down. Make that a little bigger. So I have this layer right here, layer number five, and I'm having a hard time figuring out where I want to place it. So I tried placing it on top of these 
fabric, which I didn't really like because it kind of bunches it up and it looks kind of weird. So sometimes what I like to do when creating these pictures is I'll take layer 5 and drag it underneath layer 1. And you can see that it's not on top anymore. It's underneath all the other layers. So it kind of, it's a different way of editing. So that's something important to also keep in mind that you have the option to do that too. And I kind of look, like the way it looks right there. Look at that. One of the last steps that I do, and I, this isn't the last step, but I'm going to talk about it now, is you can see a lot of the lines of the different layers, like here, you can see they're a little bit jagged, and we want to smooth them out. So we're going to click the layers on and off and see what we need to smooth out and what we need to blend in. We have our layer mask so we can erase away, and for this I'm going to choose a really smooth brush at zero pixels. Um, because I want the blending to look smooth. I don't want it to look jagged and sharp. And I'm just going to erase away at the edges a little bit here. And you can see how it kind of just blends together as a dress. Make it a little smaller. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the top. It's always important to really look up close as you're editing, like zoom in really, really close, especially with these fabric pictures. You can look at the little details because you don't want to have any little surprises when you're printing or when you upload your pictures. So always click the layers on and off and always look up close is my suggestion. Now the dress is starting to come together a little bit more. And I have this piece down here at the bottom placed down here because my goal is to take all these fabric pictures that are on the top here and blend them so that they're going down the mountain and reach over here. So that's my goal. And of course this isn't going to look like the original exactly because I'm redoing it and it would be impossible to get it exactly the same. But at least I'm the purpose is to give you the idea of how to create these kind of fabric pictures and that's the main point. So I'm having a little issue because I want to take this layer 10 and I want to place it right here but I don't really like the gap of ground that's kind of showing through here. So another little trick that I like to do in these kinds of fabric pictures is I'll transform the layer and I will go to warp. And warp is really, really fun and really comes in handy. I use it all the time for fabric pictures. So you can see the layer is warped and it has these little dots here on the sides of the box. And with these dots, you can pull up one and mess around with the fabric. You can stretch it out, and you could really angle it in really crazy ways and make it look completely different than it did before. So I'm kind of getting rid of the gap now, but I still have my layer in place. So I'm starting to like the way that looks, so I'll hit Enter. And just to show you what it looked like before, I'm going to hit Control z So pretty cool, huh?
So I pretty much finished with the composite. It's not the most perfect job in the world, but you know, like I said, this is just pretty much a tutorial just to show you how this kind of process is done. Um, it took about 15 minutes to do this. It was really, really fun to make. These kinds of pictures are always really fun. So I'm kind of just showing you how the dress looks up close. Obviously, it's not the same as the original, but the original would be almost impossible to try and put back together. If anyone who's watching this video decides to make a picture based off this tutorial, please send it to me because I really want to see it. I'll be coming out with a new video each week, so please subscribe so you don't miss any future tutorials. Anyways, I hope you guys like the tutorial, and please subscribe so you can watch more tutorials that I'll post in the future. Thank you so much, and have a great day.